How you doing, everybody? Today we're going to take a quick look at Venom Let There Be Carnage, directed by Andy Serkis. Tom Hardy reprises his dual role as Eddie Brock and Venom, and Brock is in a bit of a slump lately. His journalistic career ain't what it used to be, the love of his life is marrying that guy from Veep, and he has to share his body with the symbiote Venom, who's a bit of a loser. Brock tries to revive his career with a series of interviews with serial killer Cletus Cassidy, played by Woody Harrelson. This goes well at first, until Cassidy plays host to another symbiote known as Carnage. And he lives up to his name. And so Brock and Venom must once again play the role of the lethal protector. This is, of course, a sequel to Venom, which I did enjoy, although I would not necessarily say it was a good movie. In fact, I would say it was quite bad until Venom finally showed up. And then it was still kind of bad, but at least it was fun. The sequel does not have that problem because Venom is there right out of the gate and is still a very silly creature. And I'm glad they chose to embrace the silliness because even though silly Venom really shouldn't work, it somehow does. And if it works, go with it. There was a very funny sequence where he actually leaves Eddie for a bit and just hijacks some other dude's body and even ends up going to a party. And because it's a costume party, he can actually blend in. Though you would think even in a costume party, a bunch of people would take notice of a seven-foot-tall behemoth with big, razor-sharp teeth longer than Bill Walton's, but nope. Hardy plays both halves of this odd couple very well. He is clearly having a lot of fun as Venom, and his performance as Eddie can really be summed up in one word. Frustrated. He just wants to live a normal, happy life which is really difficult to do when you have some alien life form inhabiting your body and constantly calling you a pussy. I mean, it's rough. And I feel for him. Harrelson is creepy as hell as Cassidy, even in that awful wig. And I think that is really a testament to his acting. Everything about this guy, from his disturbingly calm demeanor, well, most of the time, to that soft tone of voice he uses as he speaks to Eddie with that sick smile of his. I mean, just one look at this guy, and you know he has killed and possibly eaten people. Well, I guess technically Carnage did the eating, but it still counts. And after hearing this guy's backstory, you can tell how he became so messed up. He came from a broken home, he was institutionalized at a young age, and the love of his life, Francis, played by Naomi Harris, was shipped off to Ravencroft. Anyone who goes through all that shit is not going to be right in the head. And I think the movie did a great job of showing how monstrous Carnage can be, and how he can pose a credible threat even to someone as overpowered as Venom. The first time Venom laid eyes on him, he was legitimately scared out of his mind. like, oh shit, that's a red one! Which they never actually explained, by the way. I thought that was kind of weird. As soon as he said that line, I thought, oh, are we going to get an explanation of, like, how different colors work with the symbiotes? Do reds have certain powers or traits that other... Oh, nope, they're fighting. Okay. And speaking of the fighting, I was a little disappointed that we didn't get a bit more of that. Venom and Carnage only have one fight in the entire movie, and it's right at the end. And really, I think it went on a little too long. Spacing the action out a bit more might have helped. And it was a really weird choice to show a younger Cletus and Francis and then dub their voices using Woody and Naomi. It just did not look right. They chose not to do any digital de-aging, probably because they didn't have the budget for that, so they just hired younger actors. And that would have been fine, but looking at that younger guy and hearing Woody Harrelson's voice, I'm like, I know who that voice belongs to, and it's not you. I don't know why they didn't just let the younger actors use their normal voices. Like, so what if they don't sound exactly the same? People's voices change as they get older. That's not weird. And I have a similar complaint that I had with the first movie. This is begging for an R-rated cut. If I didn't know better, I'd swear Circus wanted to make an R-rated movie, and they had to do so much creative editing with all the violence and the multiple heads getting bitten off with no blood. The other thing that leads me to believe he wanted to make this an R were the multiple, almost F-bombs. More than once, the character almost says the F-word and they immediately cut away. I'm like, after the second or third time that happened, I'm like, come on. Of course, there is one actual F-bomb, because in PG-13, you're allowed one. Overall, I would say Let There Be Carnage is better than the first Venom movie. It's still a very flawed movie like its predecessor, but I did have a lot of fun with it. And if you were a fan of the first movie, I would definitely recommend seeing this as well, if you can do so safely. If you did not like the first movie, this probably isn't for you either.
And if you do see it, you do not want to miss that mid credit scene because, ooh, future events are going to be interesting. And that's all I got to say about Venom, Let There Be Carnage. Till next time, take care.